Hey there, and thanks for joining me. I'm here at the Ronnie Bowers Wetland at Henry Horton State Park, which is along the Duck River in Middle Tennessee. We're gonna talk a little bit about watersheds today and what a wetland has to do with the entire ecosystem and how that plays a big, important role in our watershed. Okay, so here I am at our pavilion at the Ronnie Bowers Wetland at Henry Horton State Park. Not far from here, I can see and hear the sounds of the Duck River. The Duck River watershed consists of a lot of different areas and a lot of different people. So within our ecosystem, we have a system of plants and wildlife and animals and things that are working together, uh, not only with the geography of the land and the topography of the land to help create what we call uh, the Duck River watershed. So here at the Ronnie Bowers wetland, some of you might be wondering, well, where's all the water? The water actually works as part of the ecosystem and drains from a series of areas into this wetland. So on our park, whether it, it be from your backyard or somewhere nearby or on this property itself, the water actually travels through the ground sometimes on top of the surface through our wetlands as a, and works as a natural filtration for the river. So wetlands are an extremely important part of what makes our river so special. It provides homes for waterfowl that migrate here, it provides homes for frogs and amphibians, reptiles, all sorts of, of parts of this ecosystem and you can observe those animals and wildlife here at our wetland. So, let's talk a little bit more about what a watershed actually is. So here's an example of some of the things that make up a watershed. First of all, to know what a watershed is, is to understand what is around you. You have, may have family all over the country, you may have family that's local. They may be living in different portions of watersheds, but they all work together as one. So we are all connected through watersheds. So it's defined as an area of land that drains into a specific body of water. So a watershed needs rivers, creeks, streams, oceans, and all sorts of bodies of water that work together to create what we call a watershed. So here is a pretty uh, rough drawn example of, of what we can see happens throughout a watershed. If we look at a mountain range, or say for instance the Cumberland Mountain Range, or even in East Tennessee the Appalachian Mountain Range, water starts to uh, melt from any, the top of the mountain, or you know, rain and condensation happens, and it works its way down the streams. Eventually will lead to potentially an urban area. Um, it can fill up in ponds. It'll use, uh, it also has to do with the amount of runoff that ends up into our agricultural areas, which leads to our lakes. So they're all connected. And, and a lot of this is just an example of what you can see um, around the Duck River watershed. Um, so we may not have big mountains around, but of course we have areas of higher elevation like the Highland Rim. And so those areas of higher elevation are also connected to our low wetland areas as well. So one of the key things to take away from learning about watersheds is the impact that all of us have. We're all connected through watersheds. So one question I have for you is what is runoff? Hmm. If we can learn about runoff and what that means, we have our first step in understanding about protecting our watershed. So what is runoff? It's water that travels across a portion of land. So that could be a street, it could be a farm, that could be uh, a portion of your backyard. Understanding what runoff is will give you a good opportunity to know how you have an effect on our watershed. So for example, runoff could be fast or slow. It could be fast coming from our rooftops across a flat parking lot, or it could be slow moving through an area like a wetland where it has a chance to slow down, maybe be absorbed into the soil, or be filtered before it reaches our rivers. The next question I have is what pollutants can water pick up? 
Well, there's all sorts of things that can be picked up along the route that water might take. So water is always flowing along the path of least resistance. And so whenever it in encounters some sort of big object or something that's in its way, it will move around it. It might pick up things like oil, uh, it might pick up litter and trash, it can pick up debris like soil erosion, uh, larger, you know, large stones and things like that eventually as the water uh, starts to gain volume. How does a watershed get polluted? Well, of course, simply human activity. So we have to be aware of how our sewage is cleaned. We have to be aware of any oil leakage and spillage, and of course, litter as well. Now, the Duck River is a very diverse area, not just in the water, but along the whole corridor and throughout the watershed. So make it a point to protect not only your small portion of the watershed, but who's downstream of you as well. You actually have an opportunity to protect portions of the Atlantic Ocean just by doing things uh, to reduce your impact in your backyard. So the Duck River starts here in Middle Tennessee, works its way to the Tennessee River, which eventually meets up with the Mississippi River and flows down south to the Delta and on into our Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. So what you have to do is make sure that you understand how the impact you make has a lot to do with protecting our streams, creeks, rivers, and even our oceans. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about runoff. Here we are in our nature area, just outside the Blue Cross Healthy Place. And when we think about runoff, a sandbox is a great place to start. So you could do this even in your own backyard. It doesn't require sand, it could even just be dirt. What I'm gonna do here is I've just made a little small depression in the, in the, the sand so that you can see maybe a mountain or a hill here, okay? So what you can do is take a stick or your finger and create just a small bit of runoff or a little bit of uh, soil e uh, erosion there. Creek or a stream, okay, it can go several different directions and lead down into here into maybe a, a pond or a lake of some kind, okay? So this is fun to do. Playing in the sand is definitely fun, even for us park rangers. Okay, so I've created a couple valleys and creeks. Just a place for where the water can go. Now, if you have any rocks or anything, you could also put those in there too to, to be an example of maybe a large boulder or something that could slow the water down. Okay, sticks and things like that too. So it's important to understand that when the water starts up here, it works its way down. It can pick up things like soil sediment, rocks and boulders, pollution. Uh, and so we do have a big uh, part to play in protecting these watersheds. Okay, so I've taken just a small bowl here. Got a little water from my bucket. Don't need a lot. And in the sand, of course, the water's gonna move fairly quickly. But if I start at the top, let's see what the water does. Okay, so it's being absorbed by some of the sand. But as I pour larger amounts, you can see it's taking the path of least resistance down to the lake, okay? But this is just a great example of uh, something you could do in your backyard just to see how the water flows. Uh, the water will pick up things along the way, uh, which also gives you a great example of how uh, large amounts of water can create a serious amount of erosion and end up into our water streams pretty quickly.